Welcome to the Low Code Show, episode number nine. I'm your host, Russell Youngblood, and in this episode, we will be adding a QR code scanner to a mobile application, which we built in the last episode. So if you have the application built, let's do it. If not, back up, check out episode number eight, and then follow along to this episode. Okay, before we can start working with the QR code scanner in our application, we're going to need to download it from the OutSystems Forge. And if you're not familiar with the Forge, it is an open source repository with thousands of extensions, connectors, and components to make your life easy in OutSystems. So here on the Forge, I'm going to do a quick search on QR, and what you'll find is that it returns a number of different options. The one that I'm going to choose is the QR code scanner. I'll do a quick search to make sure it has a nice uh, star rating as well as a number of different downloads. And then I will click the install button to install it into the environment. And so it will analyze the dependencies, check to make sure that the environment does not already have this plugin. And if not, you'll see that it will install into the environment. So while that's happening, you should see a loading bar. And in just a few seconds, it will be installed and ready to use in our application. So for the next step, in the application, I'll open the Manage Dependencies window. Here on the left side of the window, you'll see all of the plugins and extensions and components that we can use. I'll quickly find the QR code scanner, make sure I've selected everything I need, and then click the Apply button. Now, typically, whenever I add a plugin to a mobile application, I'll just check to make sure that I have access to that component immediately after adding it. So here you can see under the logic layer, when I take a look under the client actions, I can find the QR code scanner and it's ready to use. Now that that's taken care of, let's go back over to the interface layer and we'll work on the home screen. We want to add an icon to the home screen so that the user can click on the icon. It will allow them to scan the barcode and then query the database for the exact product that they're looking for. So I'll find an icon that would be appropriate, and then we'll add an action to this icon. I'll right click, go to link to, and then choose new client action. And this new client action is where we'll build the actions with the plugin that we brought in just a few minutes ago. So back on the home screen, I'll go ahead and open up the action so that you can see the action flow, and then we'll bring in the scan QR code object. Now, you can see over to the right that there's a number of input and output parameters, but before we can work with it any further, we'll need to add a local variable. So once again, back to the interface layer, right click on home screen, add a local variable, and this variable will actually store the QR code once we scan it. So we'll conveniently give it the name QR code, make sure it has a text data type, and then that should be good to go. So now I'll drag and drop the variable over to the action flow, and you can see that creates an assign statement, and all we need to do is set the assign statement value of the local variable to the output of the QR code scan plugin. One more thing that we need to do is we need to refresh the data. So we'll drag and drop the refresh data. That should pop up a small window where you can see the Git products aggregate. I'll go ahead and refresh that, click OK, and now we should be good to go. Now that that's set up, we'll need to go into the aggregate and make some adjustments to the filters. Remember, this particular screen will show all of the products unless they scan with the QR code scanner. If that's the case, we're going to need to filter by the QR code that's brought back. So I'll type in a little code snippet here, and you can see that this is going to take care of both scenarios. If the QR code is an empty string or if there is an actual code that has come back from the barcode, we should be covered. Once we do that, you should see a display of the data within the aggregate preview window. Okay, now we're at a point where we can go ahead and test this out. So I'll click the one click publish button and publish this up to the server. This will create a new version of our application and we can begin testing in the browser or on the device. Now, for this example, the QR code needs to be tested on the local device. I'll launch it in the browser first, we'll take a look, and then we'll go over to the device. 
So here in the browser, everything looks good. And without systems, we have the ability to scan a QR code in the browser and launch this application on the device itself. So here I have an iPhone, and I can click the icon, scan a barcode, and it will return the product that I'm looking for. In this case, it's the Philips Hue. So we'll try with a couple of other different uh, QR codes. One for the Blaze, that looks good. It seems to be functioning. And then let's try one more for the eye health blood pressure monitor. And everything seems to be working fine at this point with our QR code and testing on the device itself. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe. Twitter.com, The Low Code Show. YouTube.com, The Low Code Show. And of course, Facebook.com, The Low Code Show. More videos coming soon.